Good morning. My name is Adina Paul, and I would like to uh, praise the Lord for another day that we can study the Sabbath school lesson. And this morning we're going to study um, the subtitle, The Courageous Prince. It's under Tuesday, question 3A. Who was faithful Jonathan, and for what qualities had he already been distinguished in Israel? First Samuel 13, 5, it says, And the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen, and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitudes. And they came up and pitched in Machmash, eastward of Bethaven. 14, 1, 6, It says, And now it came to pass upon a day that J Jonathan the son of Saul said unto the young men that b bear his armor, Come and let us go over to the Philistines' uh, garrison that is on the other side. But he told not his father. And 6, it says, And Jonathan said to the young men that bear his armor, Come and let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised, that it may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord who to save by many or by few. And then 13 to 15, it says, And Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and upon his feet and his arm bearer after him, and they fell before Jonathan and his arm bearer slew after him. And Jonathan, and that first slaughter, which Jonathan and his arm bearer made, was about 20 men within as it were an half acre of land, which a, with which a yoke of oxen might plow. And there was trembling in the host in the field and among all the people, the, the garrison and the soldier and the spoilers, they also trembled and the earth quaked. So it was a very great trembling. And verse 20. Moreover, the Hebrews that were with the Philistines before the time which went up with them in, into the camp from the country round about, even they also turned to be with the Israelites that were with Saul and Jonathan. And 23, so the Lord saved Israel that day and the battle passed over unto beth -Aven. So Jonathan is, was the son of Saul. And he was very courageous. He was like, the Lord has given them into our hands. And let's see if we can, you know, go and have a victory. So, the note says, In Jonathan, the son of Saul, the Lord saw a man of pure integrity, one to whom he could draw nigh, and upon whose heart he could move. Jonathan, the king's son, a man who feared the Lord, was chosen as the instrument to deliver Israel. Moved by a divine impulse, he proposed to his arm bearer that they should make a secret attack upon the enemy camp. It may be, he urged, that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Angels of heaven shielded Jonathan and his attendant. Angels fought by their side, and the Philistines fell before them. The earth trembled as though a great multitude with horsemen and chariots were approaching. Jonathan recognized the token of divine aid, and even the Philistines knew that God was working for the deliverance of Israel. Great fear seized upon the hosts, both in the field and in the garrison. In the confusion, mistaking their own soldiers for enemies, the Philistines began to slay one another. So it's, it's not the only um, example in the Bible that we see that the Lord has worked for his people. You know, it's like when Elisha was surrounded by the uh, Syrians, they, um, his servant was like, what are we going to do? Master, we're, we're surrounded. What happens? What, what are we going to do? And, the, and um, Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And when he opened, the Lord opened his eyes, he saw the mountains filled with, you know, heavenly hosts with chariots and they were waiting to, you know, at the command to go and help. So, and protect and guide. And so it says angels were there and they were fighting, fighting side by side. 
with Jonathan and his arm bearer. Question B, what had revealed that Jonathan was not only faithful and brave, but also, but was also beloved among the people, thus showing strong, strong suitability as to the natural heir to his father's throne? Chapter 14, verse 24 and 27. So it's still Samuel 13. Actually, Samuel 14. First Samuel 14, 27, 24 and 27. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening, that may be avenged in my on my and en- that I may be avenged on my enemies. So none of the people tasted any food. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Therefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a, into a honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes were enlightened. And 43 to 45, it says, Then Saul said to Jonathan, Jonathan, Tell me what thou hast done. And Jonathan told him, and said, I did not, but I did but taste a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand, and lo, I must die. And Saul answered, God do so, and more also, for thou shalt surely die, Jonathan. And the people said unto Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who has wrought this great salvation in Israel? God forbid, as the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he has wrought with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, that he died not. So he was faithful, and he was a valiant man. He fought on behalf of the people, and he did not know what his father said, because I don't think he's going to go against his father. He did not know the command that his father gave, and now all of a sudden his father says, you shall surely die. And the people, the people saved him. The people were like, no, you can't. You can't do that. And... um the title, uh, I mean, the note under question B says, Saul could not claim the honor of the victory, but he hoped to be honored for his zeal in maintaining the sacredness of his oath. Even at the sacrifice of his son, he would impress upon his subjects the fact that, excuse me, the royal authority must be maintained. Though the command was unreasonable and had been violated through ignorance, the king and the father the king and father sentenced his son to death. The people refused to allow the sentence to be executed. For Samuel fourteen forty five quoted, The proud monarch dared not disregard this un- unanimous verdict, and the life of Jonathan was preserved. So we see that we have a very faithful man who followed the Lord, and the Lord did not allow him to die. The Lord saw his... Um, his zeal for the Lord and his love and the Lord honored him. So we will um, continue tomorrow with um, another subtitle. And as I said before, I love this. I love the story of um, of David and of um, how he lived his life to honor the Lord. So this one is Today is not talking about David, today is talking about Jonathan, but we see that they were really good friends, they were best friends, and um, they honored the Lord together, David and Jonathan. So may you have a blessed day, and we will see you tomorrow. Take care. God bless.